Hi guys, this is Paul McWhorter again with lesson number two on the Arduino microcontroller. If you haven't watched lesson number one yet, it'd probably be good to go ahead and tune into that. We show you how to get the Arduino set up and running with your first very simple program. Uh, what we're going to do in this lesson is we're actually going to use the Arduino to control our first external circuit. And the circuit that we're going to be trying to build is shown here. It's a very simple circuit where we apply a 5 volt signal. The 5 volt signal is going to go across a resistor to an LED and is going to turn the LED on. Okay, this is a pretty simple thing. And why do we start with an LED? We start with an LED because you can buy an LED for about a dime. And therefore, we're not risking very much if something goes wrong. You've just burned out an LED and nothing uh, more expensive. And the second reason is, is that people have very rarely ever gotten hurt with an LED. And so it's a very low cost component, is a very safe component. So it's a good component to learn on. The thing to understand though, is, is that the programming techniques that we will be showing, even though we're just turning an LED on and off, the thing is, if you can turn an LED on, you could also turn a motor on. And if you could turn a motor on, you could open a door or open a window. So the things that we're doing to turn an LED on and off could be the same types of programming techniques that you would use to operate a motor or run other more sophisticated devices and so it's a good place to start. What you can see here is this is the circuit that we are trying to <clears throat> achieve. One thing to understand though is that we will be getting this voltage from the Arduino itself. If we were just to come in and hook this circuit up with a battery or a fixed voltage, it's not going to be very interesting because the LED is going to come on and just sit there. We're not going to have any way to control it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Arduino to provide the 5 volt source and that way we can turn things on or off or do things more interesting <clears throat> based on the program that we write. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, if you thought about this, and if you've ever done anything with circuits, maybe you've done things uh, with putting a stereo in your car, or putting speakers in, what you would think is, okay, I've got to hook these things together. So maybe you would have some wires like that. You say, okay, I've got to, I've got to hook to the, the one leg of the, the LED, and then I've got to come off the other uh, side of that LED, and I've got to come, and I've got to hook that to the resistor. And so I come in here, I connect this to the resistor, and then I need more wires so I can hook it up to the battery or the voltage supply. <clears throat> what you can see if you try to do this very quickly you're going to end up with nothing but a rat's nest and invariably it's not going to work because you're going to end up with two things touching that aren't supposed to be touching and you're going to end up with a short in your circuit and it's never going to work and so you just simply can't hook up circuits as they get more complicated by running wires around like what I've tried to show here. You need a better way to hook your components together. And that's why today, what we are really going to talk about is we're going to talk about the breadboard. And the breadboard is something that allows you to hook a circuit up very neatly so that you can keep it organized and so that, <coughs> that you can keep uh, keep track of your wires and get something that you can get that uh, makes something that's actually going to work because you can keep it organized. And so if we're going to use these breadboards, we're going to kind of have to learn how the things are hooked together and learn how they uh, actually uh, are kind of organized. And so I'm going to take a second here and try to just talk you through the breadboard that I've made this nice graphic here to show you how things are, are, are hooked together on the board. The thing to understand is with all of these holes, the thing to understand is along a column, the holes along a column are connected together. So if I want to hook this leg, of the LED to this leg of the resistor, I would need to hook those two legs in a common column. So I could put one leg of the LED in this hole, and I could put one leg of the resistor in this hole, and because these two holes are in the same column, those two pins are now connected together. So I connect components together by placing them in a common column. Okay, similarly, this column is hooked together. Okay, the thing to understand though is, is that things break at this trench. So basically, this hole is connected to all of these holes, but this hole is not connected to this hole because the connection does not go across the trench. And most all breadboards are that way. They have a trench in the middle and the connections stop across the trench. <clears throat> 
Another thing to understand is, is that holes along rows are not connected together. So this hole is not connected to this hole and is not connected to this hole. Holes along a row are not connected. Holes across a trench are not connected. But holes along a column up until the trench are connected. Holes along a column up until the trench are, not, are, are, are connected. Okay. The thing to see also is, is that there's nothing magic about this column. These holes are connected together. These holes are connected together. So along a column, along any column, the holes are connected together. There's one other special case, and that's for the top two rows and the bottom two rows. The top row is all connected to itself. So along this top row, row number one, all of those holes are connected together. Similarly, all along row number two, all of row number two is connected together. Similarly, the very bottom row is all connected together, and the second to the bottom row is all connected together. So <coughs> the top two rows are special cases. Row one, all connected together to itself. Row two, all connected together to itself. Second to the bottom row, same thing. Bottom row, same thing. And the reason for that is, is that that allows you, uh, like a lot of times as you get more and more components, let's say you wanted 10 LEDs, you could come across and you could have a voltage across that whole row that establishes a plus 5 volts. And every time you need plus 5 volts, you can just hook up to that first row. The thing to understand is you see that that first row is labeled positive. <coughs> it's not positive because it's labeled positive. It's positive when and if you bring a positive voltage into it. Similarly, that second row is labeled negative or ground. That becomes ground when you bring a ground into it. So don't get confused. Those labels are just convenient to remind you how to hook things up. But you have to bring in the positive voltage for it to be positive. You have to bring in the negative voltage to row 2 for it to be negative. And if you hook those up backwards, they will indeed be backwards. So remember, it matters how you hook it up, not how it's labeled. Okay, so with that, we could probably start thinking about hooking together a circuit. So let's go back and look at this circuit that we are trying to connect, and I think I can get to it here. Remember, this is the circuit that we are trying to build. <coughs> and so what would this would probably be a good time is this would be a good time to just pause the video and then look at this circuit and think how you would make those connections on this board. And then also remembering that you've got to bring your voltage in from, uh, <clears throat> from one of the pins on the Arduino. The pin that you use is just basically which one you choose. You could use any one of these digital pins here. Let's see if we can get that, uh, get that to focus. You could use any of these pins between pin... Uh, 0 and pin 13. I'm going to use pin 9, but you can use whichever one you want. But it's just when you hook it up, the code that you write has to match the circuit that you uh, the circuit that you built. So go ahead and pause for a second, and then after you think you've figured out how to hook it up, come back and I'll show you how I hooked it up. Okay. All right. So if you've taken a look at it, hopefully you have. Uh, figured out a way that you would hook it uh, <clears throat> that you would hook it up. Let me kind of show you how I hooked it up. I had mentioned that I was going to use pin 9 and so you can see that pin 9 comes here. And then if you remember we needed to go to it would sure be great if I could get both of these up at the same time. But maybe I can just kind of toggle between them a little bit here. So if you look at the circuit, you wanted to go from your positive voltage, which for me is going to be pin 9 coming off the Arduino, to one leg of the resistor. So you can see here that I've got pin 9 coming over to one leg of the resistor. This leg of the resistor is connected to, <clears throat> I do need to be in here closer. This leg of the resistor is connected to this wire because they are in the same column. There's nothing magic about this column, but it's just that leg of that resistor has to be connected to this wire, and then that wire goes and connects to pin 9. So that brings the voltage in to the left side of the resistor. Then on the right side of the resistor, we wanted to connect to the diode. Okay, This leg 
and this are in the same column. So this leg of this resistor is now connected to this diode. And now this leg of the diode is connected to this wire, which was the bottom side of our circuit, uh, because they are in the same column. And then I bring that wire back and connect it to ground. So we've got sort of the complete circuit here. We go from pin 9, which is the positive voltage. We come to the resistor. The other side of the resistor is connected to the LED. The other leg of the LED is connected to this wire, and then that goes back to ground. Okay, there's something very important here that you need to understand, and that is, is that the resistor does not care which direction that it's plugged in. It can be plugged in this way, or it can be plugged in that way. The resistor doesn't care which direction it pl it's plugged in. Uh, I should remind you that if you're using the spark fun, or if you just have a parts supply, you need to make sure that you're using about a 330 ohm resistor as a current limiter. And uh, the way you can tell what the resistance value is, you can look at the color code and the color code for a 330 ohm resistor is orange orange brown and so if you're using the spark fun inventor kit you want to make sure that you get one of the uh, orange orange brown resistors and it should be labeled in there 330 ohm but never trust the label because somebody might have used the kit before you and they might have put the 10k resistor back in that uh, package and so you really want to learn your your color codes and you never want to trust the little label on the bag because people sometimes put things back in the wrong uh, <clears throat> in the wrong uh, bag. But anyway you got the 330 ohm resistor it doesn't care which direction it pl it's plugged in you could plug it in this way or you could reverse it and plug it in the other way. Either way doesn't matter. The LED does matter. The LED only works if it's plugged in a certain specific direction. And if you look at the LED, you can see that one leg is longer than the other leg. The long leg is called the anode. And the anode needs to be connected to the positive side of the circuit. So you've got the positive voltage coming in from the red wire going across the resistor. It's that positive <coughs> voltage needs to be connected to the anode and the anode is the long wire. Okay, so basically you don't really have to remember anode and cathode so much. The easy thing to remember is the longer wire needs to be connected to the more positive part of the circuit. And so for us that is right here. Okay, now let's go ahead and see if we can start trying to kind of build this thing. I think I ought to try to make this one maybe bigger, make this window bigger, and see if you can see it a little better, help you see it. <clears throat> okay, so now we've got this a little bit bigger, and I'm going to come over here behind it. And basically, uh, I can probably make myself smaller as well and try to get these windows so that you can see what you need to see. And we can just hook this circuit up, and I hope you sort of work alongside me here as I'm doing this. I can probably bring this down. So what you can see is let's start at the Arduino, and we're going to start at pin 9. I'm going to use a red wire just like I did in the picture, and I'm going to plug into pin 9. And hopefully you can kind of see that. <coughs> there we go. And then pin 9 just comes over here. You can kind of use any column that you want. But once you start using it, you, you need to kind of keep track of which one you're in. And so I'm just going to put it there. And then what we saw is the resistor here needs to be in that same column. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to plug one leg of the resistor into that column. And then I'm going to just let the resistor kind of go across to where sort of a natural stopping point is. There you can see I went just a couple of rows over. So the left leg of the resistor is in the same column as the red wire. Now what we know is we know from here that the LED needs to be in the same column so that it connects with the other leg of the resistor. And remember, we want the anode. We want the long leg of the resistor in that column. And so let's see if I can kind of bring this over a little bit. Uh, we, we're going to put that long leg of the resistor, uh, the long leg of the LED in that same column as the resistor. And so you got to kind of plug it in, 
And let's see if you can see that. You can see that the long leg of the LED is plugged into the same column as that second leg of the resistor. And then the other leg of the resistor, I used a gray wire because it shows up a little bit, be bit better, but I will use a black wire here. The black wire in that same column is the short leg of the LED. Yeah, let's see, you can see that. Got it in the short column of the LED. And then that goes back in the picture here. So we've just made this connection. That goes back to the ground on the Arduino. So let's look here and see if we can see that ground pin. Okay, that is right there. And I plug it in. And what you can see is, is that this starts working because I had actually left a program in it from earlier. And so let's see if we can get rid of that program. Okay, so at least I know I hooked it up right. Okay, so you can see that this, this looks a lot like this on the screen. And this on the screen we did to match what our original circuit was, which is shown here. Okay, so we kind of got the circuit matching the schematic. Uh, the, the graphical diagram, <clears throat> and then we have that. I accidentally closed my window, I believe. There we go. We've got that then matching what we have here. And so let me go back and get the diagram here. Okay. So this diagram is basically what we have built here and have hooked up to the Arduino. And so that's the kind of, that's the sort of hardware part of it. And let's see if I can get this uh, uh, in, in the field of view here for the camera. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. All right, now uh, what we can do now is uh, we can come in and we can start writing our code for our Arduino. And so at this point, it would probably be better for me to make this window small so that we can focus on the code. So we'll go back to a smaller window on the camera. Okay, bring this back over to me. Okay, so this is probably a pretty good place for us to start working on our code. So we call up the Arduino IDE again, the Integrated Development Environment. And as we explained in the first video, there's two parts that every Arduino program have, avoid setup. The setup is inside of these curly brackets, and it's the things that you would want to just do one time. So typically that's declaring our pin modes, telling the Arduino what's going to be an input and what's going to be an output. And then we have our loop. And our void loop begins with this curly bracket and ends with this curly bracket. So whatever we put between those two curly brackets is going to execute over and over and over and over. It's going to loop through those, and the things that we put in the setup are just going to just going to do uh, <clears throat> run one time. The other thing that we talked about in the first video, and I'll just really try to remind you up here, is the importance of declaring our variables. That we never want to go in and set a pin mode like, you know, we said we use pin 9 down here. We would never want to come in and say pin mode of pin 9. We never want to put constants in our pin modes. We want to always use variables because that's uh, good programming practices. And our variables that we define up at the top here are our global variables. Normally, you don't want to use global variables. Normally, you want to use local variables, like just define the variables only where you need them. If you need them in void setup, put them in void setup. If you need them in void loop, put them in void loop. And they're only valid there. The uh, One of the few types of variables you really want as a global variable would be the, the, the variables that you're going to use to define your pins, because those are the ones that uh, everybody needs to know. So we're going to go ahead and do some, uh, <clears throat> some uh, global variables here. And remember, we declare our variables by telling them that they're ints. 
if we're going to declare which variable we have or which uh, pin we have, we're going to hook to, the pins come in discrete numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 0 through 13. So our pins are all integers. You would never have a pin 9.5. You would have a pin 0 or a pin 12. You would never have a pin 9.5. <coughs> so your pins need to be declared as integers. And now int is very specific. That tells it it's going to be an integer. But now in declaring your variable, you can make the variable whatever name you want, but you want to make it something that makes sense. And so if you look, our, pen, our uh, LED is red. And so why don't we call this <coughs> variable red LED, okay? And that is going to be connected to which pin? That's connected to pin 9. Okay, and that's because that's where we hooked it up on the circuit board. If you wanted to make it pin 12, you could hook it up to pin 12, and then you could make this pin 12. So it's whatever you want, but 9 is one that's going <clears> to <throat> that's gonna work okay. If you remember in the first video as well, one of the things that we did was <clears throat> we were playing with leaving the light on, leaving it off, turning it on and off. And remember we had variable of like on time, and that's going to be how long we leave the, uh, the light on. And remember that these are measured in milliseconds. So there's a thousand milliseconds in a second. So if we want to leave the LED on for half a second, that would be how many milliseconds? Half of a thousand would be 500. And then we also have an int, which is off time. And that's going to be 500 as well. Again, you could have called the on time whatever you wanted or the off time whatever you wanted. You could call this A and you could call this B. But the nice thing is to name your variables with something that sort of tell you what you're doing with them. So as your programs get more complicated, your variable names help you keep track of what's going on. So we're going to say that we want the on time to be 500 milliseconds and we want the off time to be 500 milliseconds. What do we do in our void setup? These would be things that we're just going to do one time. And what, what that would be is set our pin modes. And so we say pin mode. And what is our pin? Our pin is 9. And then that is an output. Okay? And so we set pin 9 to output. No! No! Don't do it that way. Never, ever, ever put a constant in your pin mode. You, you told it what you wanted it to be up here. Red LED is pin 9. And so when you come down here, don't put the constant 9 in there. Put the variable red LED, which you declared up here. And that way, if I come in later and I make this 10, it changes it here and it changes it everywhere else that you use it. So use variables. <clears throat> and as I'm teaching this as I'm grading, I count off if I ever see you put constants in here because it's good programming practices to declare a variable, assign a value to a variable, and then use that variable. So we only, uh, we only use variables in our, <coughs> in our uh, pin mode declarations. So we make pin mode, which one? Red LED, which is pin 9, <coughs> and we make that an output because we're going to write to it. Now we come down to our void loop. And this is where we actually are going to turn the light on or off. And to turn it on, we do a digital write. Digital write. And what do we write to? We write to pin 9. No, no, no. Do not write to pin 9. You write to red LED, which is 9. And then you want to make it high. And that will turn it on. Doing the digital write high is applying that 5 volts that we need that was shown in our circuit schematic. The way we get those that five volts is we do a digital write high. Okay, so that's going to turn the light on. So let's just take a look at this now at this point and see if it's going to work. So let's go ahead and run the program. When I run this program, we don't want to see any orange down here, meaning that we don't have any mistakes, and then we sh should see the LED turn on. <coughs> so all green down here, everybody's happy. The program downloads and the LED turns on. It sort of looks white because the camera is very bright, but if you look at it in person, it is in fact red. And so that turned it on. Now, how would we turn that LED off? Well, we would come in and we would digital write LED, red LED to low. Changing it here doesn't make it turn off here because we haven't downloaded the code into the Arduino yet. 
When we click this, the code will come down into the Arduino and then it will turn it off. Okay. <clears throat> and you can see once the code downloaded, it turned the LED off. Now that's kind of simple, just turning an LED on and off, but this is a very powerful technique because like I said, if you can turn an LED on and off, you can turn a motor on and off. And if you can turn a motor on and off, you can open and close a door or open and close a window. So all of a sudden, some really interesting things start happening. <clears throat> now, if we want to make it blink, we've got to turn it on, and then we've got to tell it how long we want it to stay on. So we're going to do a delay after we turn it on. We're going to delay by 500. No, no, no. Do not put constants down here. We define the on time up here as 500, so we come down here and we say on time, we delay. So what we do is we turn it on, and then we wait. We wait how long? On time. What is on time? On time is 500 milliseconds. After we have waited 500 milliseconds, we do a digital write, and then we do to where? R-E-D, L-E-D, and we make, ooh, I, this should be high. Okay, so we digital write red LED high, turns it on, we wait for on time, which is 500 milliseconds, which is half a second, and then we are going to digital write red LED low. Okay, don't forget your semicolons at the end of all your lines of code. That's usually why things don't work is you forget your semicolons. Okay, so now we would turn it on, we would wait. 500 milliseconds, and then we would turn it off. But it would come back on really quickly, so we got to have our second delay, which is our off time. Okay, so now let's look at the line of code. We're telling it, turn on for 500 milliseconds, turn off, and then wait 500 milliseconds. So turn on, wait 500 milliseconds, turn off, wait 500 milliseconds. Then this is the void loop, so it's going to be looping in here. Turn on, wait half a second. Turn off, wait half a second. Do it again. Turn on, wait half a second. Turn off, wait half a second. So if we did this right, the light should be on for half a second and off for half a second. Everybody's happy. It's downloading. On, off, on, off, on, off. Now, the neat thing is, is because we've used variables, we can kind of start affecting things by what we do here. So let's say instead of half and half, what if we were on for only 10 milliseconds and we were off for, or let's say on for 100 milliseconds and off for 900. So that's going to be on for a tenth, off for nine tenths. So in that case, it should just blink and be off most of the time. So look at, let's look and see what that does. Hit the wrong button. All right, there it goes. Everybody's happy. And here you can see briefly on and off for most of the time. <coughs> well, what if we do it the other way? What if we come in and say, let's be on for 900, and let's be off for 100. Now what it's going to do is it's going to come on after this downloads, and it's going to be on most of the time and then off. On for most of the time and then just very briefly off. Okay, so what your assignment is, I want you to start playing around with this. And what your assignment is, do something different with the LED. Maybe make it come on five times fast and then five times slow. Just build in these code, this code down here, turning it on and off where it does what you want it to do. But when I come around for a grade, or if you're doing this just on your own, what you should just do on your own is make the LED do something unique that you decide, this is what I want the LED to do, and then come in and change this code or add code to it to make the LED do what you want. Also, if you're part of my class, then what I also want you to do for a grade is add a second or a third LED. Instead of just having a red LED in your SparkFun Inventor Kit, you have some yellow LEDs. Maybe you should add a yellow LED in addition to the red LED. Let's take a look here. Okay, uh, Just keep picking red ones. Okay, there's a yellow one. Add a yellow one. <clears throat> if you add a yellow one, <clears throat> if you connected the yellow one, in the same place that you connect the red when they're going to blink together. Like, in fact, I could probably do that right now with a little luck. I could hook them together. And you see that same signal is making them blink together. <coughs> and you could do that pretty, uh, you could do that pretty easily. 
But you see, that's not very interesting because they're doing the same thing. What I want you to do is I want you to create a different pin so that you create a different circuit. You're going to need another resistor, and you're going to need another pin off the Arduino, like maybe besides pin 9, maybe you should use pin 8. Set that up as yellow LED, and then you can independently control the red LED and the, uh, and the yellow LED by having uh, uh, more lines of code in your program. But that's what I want you to do. I want you for your assignment is to make the red LED work independently from the yellow LED and write some code that will make it do that. Okay, that's video number two, video Arduino lesson number two. Hope you guys will come back soon and t tune in for video lesson number three. We will get be getting gradually more and more complicated in our programming. We will be working with LEDs for a while because again, Again, they're cheap and they are safe and so we're going to kind of learn on these LEDs and then as we go on we'll start incorporating more sophisticated components. Talk to you guys.